I'm Rick Guerrero along with Greg Roden for Armstrong Street Scene and today we're at the Heritage Day in Greenville, Greenville PA. Pennsylvania. I tell you, we've been wanting to come down to this one too. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think this like, is the 10th or 11th year. Yeah, somewhere now. around there. Mm -hmm. But uh, what do you have to say Not about... Not a cloud in the sky. It's perfect. There's yeah. nothing wrong with this today. There's no humidity. So that, what does that mean? That means the cars are coming out. The car guys, car girls, everything. It's just the people are coming out to see all the cars. It's just a beautiful day just to be outside. How many cars do you think are going to be here? I don't know. I bet you there's 600 here now. Yeah. And it, if there's 600 here now, uh, we're here in the morning and the show is not supposed to start till two o'clock. Mm -hmm. So and if we you got, got 400 more cars coming in, it's going to fill this place. And we got here about 10 o'clock this morning. Yeah, so, I know, so it was that's, pretty much packed. Yeah, we're still exactly. coming in. Yeah, so, so. so we did a it's, a, it's a heck of a show. The one thing we wanted to mention is we're, you know, we love cars and there's a lot of things we love. And one other thing we love is dogs. And our dogs, yes. And we wanted to mention that uh, when we come out to these shows, we see a lot of people walking their dogs. Well. This is blacktop. We have a lot of shows on blacktop, and it's really not that good for the dog's feet. Yeah, if you see on the graphic, you can see how hot it gets at the 70 degrees, 80 degrees. You know, you're up in the 80s, it's like 130, yeah. 40 degrees at asphalt. So if you can't walk on it with your bare feet, don't expect the dog to walk on it with their bare feet. Yeah, so you know, it'd take time then, you know, just think twice when you bring your dog out, especially even if they have long fur, and you know, they're hot. Put a wool coat on and walk it on blacktop with your bare feet. That's what they're feeling like. Yeah, so it's, it's, just, just watch. We wanted to put that message out to you. Just watch that. And bring water for them too, also, so they get the hydrate, dehydrate yeah. really quick. So. Well, I tell you what. We said our message about the dogs. Then what are we going to do? Hey, let's go inside and check out the cars. Let's check out the cars. Yeah. Come on. With me, I got Bill Sumner's chief cook and bottle washer. <laughs> now he's the organizer of the, the Heritage Day Car Show here in uh, Greenville, Pennsylvania. Yes. You couldn't ask for a better day. No, no. If they were going to try and sell me a day, I couldn't have bought a better one than this. You know, you know we're so. going to have to pay for this down the line. You know that. Probably. It's probably going to snow next week or That's something. Right. It's, look, there's not a cloud in the sky. It's going to be an absolutely gorgeous yeah. day today. And how many cars are you expecting? Well, I can tell you right now, we're, we're just about, what, 1030 in the morning or something like that, and we're, we're over the 400 car mark already. Oh, yeah, and yeah, this yeah. show doesn't start until 2. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's know. some beauties here. We were walking up and down the street interviewing people already, and I'll tell you what, it is. this is going to be a good day. Oh, yeah. This is going to be a great day. Yes, we're going to have a couple, one new thing here that, you know, uh, about three o'clock this afternoon, we're going to let some of the guys with the, with, with the uh, Monster Motors fire them up and make a little noise here. We're gonna have a little impromptu cackle fest here. You know, uh, these two guys over here to my right with these with the, with the blower motors. They're gonna be uh, they're gonna be part of the noise. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, you know, might not be able to hear the G DJ, but you're gonna hear some good noise. So what are some yeah. of the things going on in this cruise on cruising? Okay, this, you just talked about those. It's like it's not just the cruising. It's like the Greenville Day, really. Well, it is. There's yeah. a, there's a Heritage Days. Uh, there, there's some events down at the Riverside Park area down here where they have they there's about 40 vendors down here that, that uh, selling uh, various goods down there. They have uh, bounce houses for the kids, uh, a couple other things for the for the kids. There's some uh, uh, crafters down there, some artisans. 
Um, there's a museum, there's a canal boat museum down here. Uh, they even have a little a, a little mock train that came in from Canadian National Railroad mm -hmm. called Little Obi, and it's a thing to, to uh, uh, promote tra uh, sa uh, train safety. Mm -hmm. And it's like a scaled down version of an actual train. Isn't there a you train know? museum up here also? There is a train museum up, uh, up here on Main Street. Mm -hmm. There's a Wah House, which is a museum here from a lot of artifacts from Greenville. Uh, so there's a lot to do here today, you so know. we got to um, try to get some of these guys from over to Mahoning Valley to come over here next year. Absolutely. And, What's wrong and, with you people from Ohio? Well, I'll tell you, know? you got to get them to come over here. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, you pulled in, you probably pulled in, what, 700 cars today, hopefully? Oh, we'll, 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 be, we'll be over that. You know, uh, my, my goal is to hopefully say i got a 1,000 cars here. Mm -hmm. I don't know where the hell I'm going to put them all. Uh, you know, but uh, we'll find out when I get here. And what's the you cost know? to get into the show? It's free. This, it's there's free. there's no registration fee whatsoever. We do accept donations if you like. We do have a 50-50, which will probably be quite large today. Uh, we have uh, multiple awards. There's two two memorial best of show awards today. One for a competition car, one for just a regular custom car. Um, the people from Power Power Scope are filming this car, filming this show for the Velocity Channel for the low car ch low car car show on the Velocity Channel. Uh, so they give out a best of show award that mm -hmm. they pick themselves. Plus we have the Heritage Days Great Eight, which we have picked by a car club from Meadville called Classic Irons. They'll be here picking the best eight of the show here, and uh, they got their work cut out for them today. Let oh, me tell you. I'll tell you, um, there's and, some beauties here. And the, the winners of the Great Eight get a mechanics jacket with the Great Eight winner and the t-shirt logo screen printed on the back of the car. Mm -hmm. uh, then later on the day, I'll pick a car who's going to be on the t-shirt and all the wine bottles for next year. And that's one thing I, I uh, omitted there. Later on the day, we give away 200 bottles of Heritage, Super, Heritage Day Super Cruise wine. And the t-shirt logo is screen printed on each bottle. This year was a 33 Roadster by, from a gentleman from Warren, Ohio, who actually passed away. Bill Carr will be here shortly. Um, and uh, it's called Roadster Red this year. And there's 200 bottles of that. It's unique. I mean, there's no, there's no place, there's no car show in the United States that I that I know of that does that. You know, I build it as the only drinkable trophy east of the Mississippi. <laughs> yeah, really. Hey, Bill, thank you for your time. Thanks Guys. for what a great event you got here, Greenville, Pennsylvania, Heritage Days. Okay. It'll be this time next year too. What? What is it? The uh, it's always the first, first Saturday in July. With me I have Keith Mitchell and Dan Nagel, and we're standing in front of a, what, 2015 Chevy Dragster, Mud Dragster. Mud Dragster, correct, yeah, that's it's a pretty, pretty all, chrome, all chrome molly, rear engine Mud Dragster, with 745 cubic inches, there's four carburetors, two stages of nitrous, does have a triple disc clutch with a single gearbox in the back, um, of course it's four nine inch rears, all custom, but. Basically everything's custom built on this car. It even has an independent front suspension out of a Geo Tracker front differential. It is four wheel drive. So how do you start building something like this? Well, we built multiple ones actually, and we always had front engine cars, and uh, we actually ran across this chassis. was uh, almost completed, but it was never finished, and we went ahead and picked it up and put our own twist to it and, and modified it the way we wanted. But, uh, it's, uh, we got started years ago playing in the mud down in the, down the river with an old Land Cruisers and old Chevy pickups and it just kind of evolved into some competition and this is what we got 20 30 some years later. So how often do you have to rebuild this thing? Usually about at least once to twice a year. Okay, it oh, depends that's not bad. Yeah. how aggressive we get on the tune-up with the nitrous. Okay. If we get real aggressive on the tune-up, more pistons we put in it. Okay, I was going to say what goes to pistons? The yes. Pistons go. Okay. So yeah, we can be hard on parts if we want to be, but we try not to be. So how many horse do you think this thing's pushing? Right now, the motor dynoed at 1,350 before nitrous, and right now before we're- Before nitrous. Before nitrous. And right now we're putting between seven and 800 horsepower nitrous to it, with uh -huh. two stages. So, so when you race these things, so I'm not too familiar. I've seen them on TV a couple of times. Is it all mud or what? And how, well, how long's the track? It, it depends on what, you know, what part of the country you go to. Sometimes it's sand, sometimes it's mud. But it's evolved over the years from being where the old days of slopping around in deep mud, you know, because of the speed of the cars. Mm -hmm. we, they've had to 
get the tracks groomed and a lot more well taken care of. So, I mean, we not, we love nothing to see something we pull up to a line that looks like it's ready to be planted grass seed, you know, yeah, nice, nice and smooth and, hard, and yeah. flat. Cause we are reaching almost 100 miles an hour and 200 feet at 2.3 seconds. How many feet? 200 feet 200 is the, 200 feet's the longest track we've ever run. We helped start the MRA, it's Mud yeah. Racers Association. Um, and, and luckily, you know, we, we did help start that. And the, so, so the Transfer Harvest Home is a fair coming up in August. And it, it'll be the 10th year for the National Point Series to come through that fair, little so fair. So if someone wants to see these, they can go to the tran Transfer, the transfer Harvest Home the last weekend, and uh, almost last weekend in August. It's always a full week before, before uh, Labor Day. If someone wants to get uh, involved with this, how would they do it? Into mud racing? Yeah, mud racing it on on the website. You got a website and everything? Yeah, I mean the MRA definitely has website, Facebook, you can pull up a lot of stuff. What's nice about the sport is you can start out entry level. Right. You can start out with your pickup truck and come and drag race with a stock class. How about any kids involved with this? Oh, like uh, well, they are starting to get more involved with some junior dragsters. If you get on there, you'll see some junior dragsters. They'll put little scoop tires on them and, and take them out of track. We're trying to get them in more involved because it's like every other sport. It's, yeah. We're struggling to get new blood in, and uh, so we got to get the kids involved sure. and get try to involved, get, get the them involved so they want to grow and help their parents and keep them going. So... From Coshocton, Ohio, we got Brent Clark with his 56 Chevy 150 two-door handyman wagon. How's yep. it going? Good. What a beautiful car. Thank you. Thank you. Jeez, that's, this thing's uh, laid out. Thanks. <laughs> thanks. Sun, sun brings it out today. Yeah, oh, the color yeah. in this thing, yeah. it's just popping. I wish we yeah. could see it on camera, but man, what color is that? That's uh, 90, uh, 93 Mazda. Um, oh, that's a, that's a stock color? Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's pretty. Yeah. It's a, what is it, like an orange? It's or a spicy or? orange mica. Uh-huh. Boy, that's a perfect color yeah. for this thing. Cadillac beige pearl and then the painter um, blended that gold there to, to match in. Mm -hmm. Who painted it for you? Uh, Steve Newell with H&H &H Auto in uh, Coshocton. Uh -huh. Did a nice job. How long have you owned her? Uh, since I three. <laughs> and finished it in 2015. Uh-huh. So. What was she like when you got it? It was, um, Pinecrest Green and India Ivory uh -huh. had a uh, six-cylinder power glide in it. So it's so pretty much stock, stock color. Yeah, yeah stock, stock color. Um, found it in a block building in Westerville, Ohio, and actually traded an '83 Suburban for it. Okay. How good a shape was it in? It was in real good shape. Uh, most of these cars, the spare tire well when you open the 
the back cover, you could see the see the ground, but this thing was solid. So good. That's the biggest part. Yeah. That's the biggest um, part. We have a good body. No, no body panels were replaced at all. So uh -huh. I was lucky to lucky to find it in the condition that uh, that I did. So. And Kashokton is how far from here? Oh, uh, it took us. We left at five this morning to get here. So it's about 145 miles on the GPS. Yeah. So. No problem with this. This cruises right along. Yep. Yeah, well, well, it's a trailer. I trailered it over. Oh, you trailered it yeah, over? Yeah, I trailered okay. it over. Boy, she's, she is sure is pretty. What, yeah, are you, what are you sporting you. under the hood there? It's a 94 LT1 out of a Camaro with a 4L60E transmission. Mm -hmm. Has a 9-inch Ford, 389 gear. Um, you got that looking so clean under there. Yeah, this whole car is clean. It's, it's laid out. Thank you. It's laid out to the max. How about the glass? Is the glass in good shape on this? No, uh, all the glass has been replaced. Um, Auto City Classic uh, up in Minnesota provides uh, glass for all Tri Fives. Mm -hmm. That's one of the suppliers. How about the undercarriage? Undercarriage, uh, it's all stock. It's, it's all stock. Um, stock Tri Five. Um, does have um, two inch drop spindles, coilovers in the front, uh, spring pocket kit. But, um, it's a stock uh, stock frame. Mm -hmm. It's a beauty. It's Thank a you. beauty. Thank you. We're standing in front of a 1966 Dodge Charger with a 426 Hemi and owned by Bill Dano out of uh, Cannonsburg. How's it going? Great. This is a nice car. Thank you. You don't see too many of these. No, uh-uh. How long, how long have you had it? Since 1988. I'm uh -huh. the second owner. Mm -hmm. It came from Portland, Oregon. Okay. And uh, me and my wife, we flew out there, purchased it, and drove it back. Oh, you uh, drove it home? We drove it home and uh, made a, a little vacation out of it. and. Uh, Probably wasn't too good on gas, but back. No, then, but so uh, back was, who yeah. the hell cares? <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. It was fun, though, huh? Yes, it was. Uh, what do you got on here? You got the 426 it's Hemi. A, yeah, 425 horsepower. Dodge uh, brought it out so they wouldn't be last. Uh huh. And this is what they raced these in NASCAR. Yes, they did. So they had to make a certain amount of these, yeah. right? At least uh, uh, 500 to the public. Okay, so and, in order uh, to put them into the race, into yes. the race officially. Okay. And that's, so that's the NASCAR engine now. Basically. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. First, two two four barrels. Okay. That's the way they came from the factory. Mm -hmm. And this is the first year for this style of Charger. Yeah, first year for the Street Hemi and the uh, uh, Dodge Charger debut. Uh huh. Hideaway headlights. That's, yes. That's a nice. Thing. They're electric. They run, oh, you know, electric? 12 volt. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. I had my old Cougar. They were a vacuum. Yeah. Uh -huh. No, <laughs> these were electric. <laughs> uh -huh. These were electric. Is there, uh, is there a car club for these? Or um... well, there's a Hemi uh, registry. Okay. Mm -hmm. So hard to get parts for. Yes, uh, the body parts are. Uh huh. Yeah, they really don't remanufacture. The mechanical parts you can mostly get. Right, just don't break that back glass, right? Well, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> we talked to one guy uh, like yeah. a couple shows ago. They don't remanufacture uh, that back glass. He had the Barracuda with the rounded glass on it. Yeah, that and I too. Said, I said, what about the black ass? He goes, glass? He goes, well, I got an extra one, so it never breaks. <laughs> yeah, I have an extra one too yeah, myself. you can never find them. You know? Yeah, you still can get the front glass. Mm -hmm. But uh, a lot of parts on this car just aren't compatible with other cars. Right, right. What color is this? It's called daffodil yellow. Daffodil yellow with black interior. Also white interior. White interior? Oh, it is white interior. Oh, I'm in love now. I like the white, I like the whiter color interior. Yeah, and interiors. the back seats fold down. Uh-huh. You know. Oh, wow, that's, that's got a lot of room in there, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, wow. It's pretty big inside here. Looks roomy, comfortable. Bucket seats, yeah. all stock. Yes. Uh -huh. Has it been redone over? Yeah, I, the paint job's been freshened up and uh, new interior.
You're watching Street Scene. My father-in-law used to operate this when he worked at a local Ford garage in, back in the day. And uh, we had an opportunity to buy it. When we bought it, it was a bucket of bolts. Mm -hmm. Took it from the frame. Mm -hmm. And everything here has been powder coated, painted, plated, yeah. or polished to perfection. Right now, Gary's working on a rendering of the Monaco Grand Prix. Mm -hmm. And what year do you think this is? It's around 2000. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And uh, Michael Schumacher, Fernando Alonso, they were the two big forces in Grand Prix at that time. And uh, this is a Monaco Casino, the Buddha Bar, it's an internationally famous place. And uh, what it, I did in this is captured four cars, different makes, BMW, Mercedes, Renault, and a Ferrari that weren't actually in these positions at any time in there. That's the artistic license where you can get, move things around, put things, compose a, an idea. This is done in acrylic. This is hand painted. Most folks recognize, you know, traditional art. That's as close to traditional art as I do. This is kind of what I do for myself. And uh, it's a painting I've been working on, on and off on for a couple of years now. <laughs> trying to get done or trying to not get done, mm -hmm. wanted it to. But uh, it's just something I really enjoy doing. So, so what do you do once you finish it though? Do you put a, like a finish over it or anything? Or yeah, you... acrylics, they have, a, a, uh -huh. they have several different finishes you can put on it. Gloss, satin finish, right. matte. And depend, it, they're, they're nice because what they do is offer a degree of waterproof and protection. And they also help you consider the environment that it'll be in. Mm -hmm. If you're in a bright light area, maybe you want to use a flatter finish on right. it. Or a dull area, maybe a little glossier finish. Are you ever commissioned to do uh, artwork for people? I used to do a lot of portraits mm -hmm. and caricatures for people in this kind of stuff. But when I moved to Youngstown, I kind of lost my market that I, the people that uh, knew me that I would do that for. Mm -hmm. So that's about the time I started, you know, doing the automotive stuff here. And so, so what have we got here? This is something local guys and gals uh -huh. might recognize. This is down at the Lowellville Car Show, and everybody knows the bridge that comes into town. Well, if you go off the bridge and go down this road, there's a railroad crossing right there, and that's what this is. That's the house back there, the railroad signal and I put a car in. I took a little bit of artistic liberty with it. That's a paved street down there, blacktop. But I wanted to make it look a little bit more country, a little more rustic, a little older. I made it a dirt road with dust being kicked up off of the, uh, the tires on the car. It's a nice kind of evening with light coming across. Oh, that's a nice touch there. I didn't mm -hmm. notice that. Yeah. It gives you uh, a lot of highlights on this side of the car. And the headlights are on, it gives you uh, evening feel. I'm, I'm very fond of evening and nighttime and that's scenes. And that's when this cruise is all the time, Monday evenings. That's yeah. exactly, right. yeah. Right, mm -hmm. they leave about eight, nine o'clock at night. So yeah. that's really nice. And how about the driver there, you know who he is? I don't know who the driver <laughs> is, but that driver right there was actually the passenger yeah, over so you here. moved him over. The driver was uh -huh. in, in total darkness in the shadows there. So I, I did want somebody to show in there. It didn't look like a phantom vehicle. Right, right. So I put the passenger over there. So you don't know whose car this is? Then. I don't it's know, just, but it was unusual just... in that the car was silver. You usually see these in more traditional black and maroon, deep blues, things like that. The occasional bubblegum pink one. But uh, you hardly ever see them in silver. So I thought that was a unique vehicle. And silver picks up so much highlighting. You get purples sky blues in it. It's kind of like a mirror in a way. It reflects a lot of different color. And you, you named it Stranger in Town. Stranger in Town. Uh -huh. Yeah, he's out to get you.
me I have Roy Atkinson from Hermitage, Pennsylvania. What's going on today, Roy? Oh, beautiful, beautiful. The, the weather, I mean, it couldn't be any better. Uh, look at the cars here. I mean, I think they expected 700 cars, and I think they're going to make it. Uh, at least. At, yeah. at least. In the yeah, we love these. You know, this is when we quit going fast. You know, years ago, then mm -hmm. we, we replaced it with these old cars. That's and right. What, what are you sporting here? Oh, this is a 58 Chevy Del Rey. This is a, an, an actual factory built car. This had a had a um, NASCAR type motor in it from NASCAR. the factory. Oh, yeah, that's a factory one. Yeah, and then wow. and then the transmission is a late year uh, option. It was a four speed transmission, mm -hmm. first year for it in a passenger car. Mm -hmm. What makes but, it a What makes it a Del uh, Del, Del Roy, right? Del, Del Ray. Del Ray. Okay. Yeah, it's the cheapest car they made that okay. year. Yeah, but that's what the racers liked back then, right? Oh yeah, light, light lightweight, go yeah. fast. Yeah, that was the idea behind it. That's it. Yeah, this car here, it doesn't look like it, but this is a three carburetors. Uh, it's got a oh. high compression cam and okay. solid lifters and and everything in it. Everything to make it go fast. Yeah, what size engine did you say that was? 348. 348. Is that yeah. the one they bored to be a 409? Right, that's okay. the car they built the 409 out of. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Now, how long do you own this? Oh, my. Uh, <laughs> let's see, we we uh, finished this car in 2011, uh -huh. and uh, that year it took a AACA, which is the Antique Club right. of America, it took an award of excellence. Okay. And. Uh, what do you have on? You have a junior or a senior on this from the AACA? No, no? a word of excellence. Award, okay. Yeah, and uh, it was uh, voted, I guess, the best in that class right, for that right. that uh, particular day. This is a one-year model, the '58. The Del Rey is, yeah. Okay. But that, yeah, this car was only built in this configuration 58, in '58 yeah. only. But that had to be expensive, you know, retool it and everything. Redone. Well, yeah, because yeah. just about everything built for this car had to be found somewhere. Yeah. And. Uh, but no, it was uh, probably four years in the restoration process. Where did you pick this up at? This car uh, actually came from Missouri. Okay. And uh, yeah, we took it from the frame, mm -hmm. and everything here has been powder coated, painted, plated, yeah. or polished to perfection. She's a beauty. Yeah, thanks. How, she's pretty fast for you? No. For the time, though. Yeah, yeah for, for the, the time. time. For the time, it was very fast. Well, what's, what's fast for this? Oh, this car right here in a quarter mile at that time would probably do. 100 to 105 mile an hour. Okay, that was back yeah. in the 60s. Okay. Yeah, today uh, the guys that would have running these stock classes, they're running 160 mile an hour. Yeah, a little different. A little yeah. Different. Well, you're talking about 50 years ago? Yeah, 60 at years least. Ago? Yeah. David Baguziak from Cochran, PA, in his 2012 McLaren 12C. Yes, sir. Wow. <laughs> yep, what can I say? You know. How long have you owned her, Dave? Uh, we just had it about a month now. Uh-huh. Yep. Having fun? Oh, great time. Oh, Beautiful yeah. car to drive. Oh, it sure is. Yep. Where, where'd you pick up something like this at? Down out of Atlanta. That was our closest uh, uh -huh. uh, McLaren dealer down there. So okay. we happened to see it and stopped by and ended up purchasing it. Uh-huh. Tell me about her. I don't know. Anything about McLarens? Well, they started out with the F1 uh, formula right. back in, uh, everybody knows, McLaren Road Racing. Mm -hmm. uh, this is one of their production models, 12C, they come out with, and they've got various models after this. But mm -hmm. uh, it's a very good road car, Lambo doors on it, I guess they would call it, even though it's a McLaren. That's, that's stock? Yeah, that's all okay. stock, yep. Mm -hmm. Volcano red. Boy, that's a, that thing pops. You know, look, looking at the front right now, it looks like it's red, and then all of a sudden the sun's hitting it back there, and it just turns just like into a, a goldish, goldish orange, orange or something like that. Yeah, yeah isn't that amazing? What a yep. Beauty. Yep. And then they make their own motor, uh, McLaren motor, 3.8 twin turbo, uh -huh. roughly 600 horsepower. Ay, ay, ay. Yep, yep. <laughs> uh, 207 mile an hour top end. Uh -huh. so. Okay, okay. My favorite question, Dave. How fast have you had her? Uh, better plead the fifth on that. In Mexico. <laughs> in, in Mexico. In Mexico, right? Uh, 171 so oh, far. Oh, my God. Yeah. How'd that feel? Oh, it was great. It was just like on rails. Well, yeah. Is yeah. there more? Oh, yeah. Oh, there's lots left. Uh -huh. Yep. yep. What's, what's the high speed on these? It's 207, what they're claiming. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Have you had it on the track at all? Not yet. No. Nope. Yeah. We're going to. This would be a good one for Middle Ohio. Yeah. You ever been down to Middle Ohio? A long time ago. Oh, this yep. would be great for yep. Middle Ohio. That road course, two and a half miles long. Oh, yeah, we're definitely going to put it out there. Yeah. What yeah. are you sporting for rims on this? What size are those? Uh, I believe those are 19 inch P0s. They're rated for 186 plus. Uh -huh. 
and then they got the ceramic brakes that's a big option for them and uh, they even got a little di deal down there that uh, uh, wipes the rotors off if it rains keeps your rotors ah. dry oh is that what that yeah, piece is the, up the there? black one is yep. oh, okay. so if your wipers come on they they contact too this thing's got, probably got a lot of amazing things on it. It's, it is. It's there. it's a lot of computer control stuff. Yeah. Did you get the sticker on this when you bought it? The sticker? Yeah. Yeah. When you oh, it was brand new. Yeah. It was a yeah. Two forty on it. Two forty. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. wow. Yep. They hold their value pretty good. Oh, they're coming down. They're getting into a little bit more reasonable. But yeah, they they're they're right out there. They're still kind of pricey, but uh, get what you pay for. Oh sure. Yep. Sure. They yep. hold their value. Sure. Do yep. They? Uh huh. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> With me I have Frank Fenton from Jamestown, Jamestown yes. in Pennsylvania. We're on the other side of the line. We're we're an Ohio based the show, but we're on the other side of the line today here in Greenville, Pennsylvania. 37 Ford Wrecker. Yes, sir. This is pretty nice. It's very nice. And it's unique. Y yes, it is. Yes, very it unique. Is. It's you know, I would say it's about 90 plus percent original with uh -huh. a few other things that aren't original, mm -hmm. but you know, it, my father-in-law used to operate this when he worked at a local Ford garage in, back in the day and uh, we had an opportunity to buy it. When we bought it, it was a bucket of bolts. Mm -hmm. And it's been several years before it was completed, just completed about a year ago. And the engine's been rebuilt. It was a frame up respiration. Uh, just, we spent more than we thought. Oh, of course. <laughs> we always do. You always do that. So. I know, but it's uh, it's unique and it's done right and it's a it's a very complete piece, it's I would beauty. say. So what are you what are you sporting under the hood there? It's a it's a flathead V8, the original style for that in for that truck rather. 
It's a 219 cubic inch. And, uh, you know, uh, it too is original and rebuilt mm -hmm. completely, so. So you got a little history about this car. Oh yes, oh yes. That's why we own it, mm -hmm. is because of the family connection it's and then the fact that we could do something that, you know, it's not an everyday look when you go to a car show, you know. When you got a history behind it, it's priceless. Right? Well, it basically it is yeah, because, yeah. you know, when I go, my family hopefully takes care of it and it's been done so that it will last sure. several years and sure. it'll be a good uh, history lesson for lots of people. So, so. How, so tell me about it. What's that? What do you mean? Well, when you first, uh, this truck, it was your father-in-law, you said? Yeah, my father-in-law was uh, a Ford person blue through and through and he worked at the local Ford garage in here in Greenville, and then and when he went to work there back in the day, that's the wrecker they used to tow vehicles this with. This is the exact wrecker. This is the exact wrecker. You can check the serial numbers and the whole thing. And then it went to a couple local shops in Jamestown, and from there it never really left. And it's got 65,000 miles on it, and I'm sure they're probably pretty close. <laughs> yeah. And. Uh, so we, uh, we had an opportunity to buy it and uh, like I said we bought it and then it scared me to death when we're buying pieces like that grill and mm -hmm. things that astronomical numbers oh, but sure. but we were into it so there's no uh, no, no stopping right. no turning back right. so so did you have problems finding parts for it? oh yes it parts were very difficult to find and uh, there's no catalog for 37 Ford record there, no <laughs> like, no no Bellas and Fords and you know uh, to, to complete the story there's wood in the bed of this truck and my father-in-law owned a small farm and they timbered off his property mm -hmm. and we personally bought a lift of white oak wood and we kept it stored and when we redid this truck the white oak out of his woods mm -hmm. is in the deck of this uh -huh. truck so you know we tried to make it the local people did the, the engine right. local That's people all, did the upholstery the engine's all redone, all redone. Uh -huh. runs like and, a new truck right sir yes sir and jerry uh, jerry mcdowell that did the paint and the body work and things just did a very good job and Chet, I uh, can't think of his last name, did the, the, uh, the lettering and things, which is outstanding, yeah, I think. And yeah. Just uh, just very proud of it. Yeah, sure, I would be too. This is a gorgeous truck. It's like, a lot of times you'll see old trucks fixed up, but they don't, yeah, go, they don't go to the to the T to, with to, them. But boy, this, you dotted every I and crossed yeah, every T on this baby. Yeah, it, it's, it's a beauty. Yeah, it is. I, I like it and uh, I'm proud of it. And I guess that's the important thing. Heritage Days, Greenville, Pennsylvania, 2018. Wow. Yeah. Perfect day. There are so many cars out here. And some, and what did you think about, what's the one that really impressed you that you can't, don't even have words for? Well, that McLaren was one of them. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> we don't see McLarens, uh -uh. you know, so we had that McLaren down there and of course, you know, the, the truck, the, the tow truck. The tow truck and yeah. the 56, be yeah. beautiful. I think yeah. there's gotta be six, 700 cars here now. Again, we couldn't, there's, we could stop at every one and do interviews, but mm -hmm. we'd have the show for the rest of our lives. You got it. And it's just impossible to get all the cars that we want to get on there. This is my backyard. I'm from Hermitage here, about 20 minutes, which isn't far at all. No, Damn. you know, I, I've been up here, again, I grew up in New Wilmington, mm -hmm. so, uh, you know, I've always been wanting to come up here mm -hmm and never have gotten to, but now I can say I have. Yes. And definitely we would be back. This is one show that you want to get out to right, if you sir. haven't been out to we a gotta, show like this. We gotta this. try to get some of the guys from the uh, Mahoning Valley over here, over yeah. the Ohio side to come over here to the Pennsylvania side. It's a heck of a show. It's just right on the main street. You just take 18 all the way up into Greenville if you're, and uh, you're right here. Well, it's, right it's a straight shot because yeah. I live in North Lyman now, mm -hmm. so I hopped on 680. Mm -hmm. 
hit 80. I was off on her on Route 18, and I was up here. It was that was it was that easy. It took me about an hour, yeah. and it was well worth the drive. I enjoyed every second of it. Actually, you got it. What a great! This has been a great year for me in cars. I've been hitting a lot of car shows and. Uh, uh, just neat. I just I, I love the car guys and the car girls and just the clubs. They come up and we talk anymore. They're like my best friends anymore. Yeah. You know. So if, you know if you got a common interest of cars, you always have something to talk about. Right. You got it. Mm-hmm. You got it. No matter what they got. You yeah. Know? Exactly. It could be a two hundred dollar car. It could be a two hundred thousand dollar car. But, it doesn't matter. But you realize a two hundred dollar car could have something so rare that you wouldn't even believe it. All right. Which All doesn't right. make it a two hundred dollar yeah. car anymore. Well, for. Rick Herrera, I'm Greg Roten. For Armstrong Street Scene, we'll see you down down the the road. road.